everyone. I'm, I'm Mujtaba from Stanford University, and uh, today I'm going to talk about deep learning based fast solver of the shadow regression. It's a joint work between Stanford University and University of Hawaii and US Army Engineer Research and Development Center. Uh, <clears throat> so this is the general uh, setup of the problem that we're trying to solve, uh, starting with information of the battery conditions at some given river. Uh, we would like to have like a fast predictor of the river flow velocity. Uh, there are of course a couple of reasons, motivations for doing that, for instance, to study the river morphodynamics or safe and efficient maritime transportation, study of atmospheric process, and probably the most important of all, it's um, uh, for the flood prediction. Uh, th that's the part that we need to fast solve for because the changes can happen very quickly during the flood in time. Uh, of course, there are some solvers already available to um, take care of this problem, but uh, they have two main issues. One is that there are slow numerical solvers. DSW here stands for shadow water equations. It's pretty much the governing equation for this uh, problem that we have here. Hey, Mustafa, have um, you switched side, slides? Are you on the next slide? Because it's not updating on the... Oh, my. <laughs> what is it showing now? It's still, uh, okay, on let me main, just... it's still on the main slide. There we go. That looks now you're now you're okay. Yeah, there. I had yeah, I had to go back. Yeah, uh, exit right. the full screen mode. I'm not sure what's going on. Yeah. Okay, so uh, um, okay, hopefully I can continue now. Uh, so one of the issue uh, with current solvers is that there are quite slow numerical solvers, and to take care of that problem, what we do is that we want to use deep learning as part of our forward fast forward solver to make it faster. Uh, but also another issue is that they require high resolution bathymetry uh, measurement. Uh, because the, the forward problem is pretty much from bathymetry and boundary condition to flow velocity. And to take care of that part, what we do is that we want to add this sort of flexibility to our forward solver that if we provide bathymetry to it as an input, it, pr it predicts a deterministic flow velocity. But if not, then uh, using whatever information that we had initially, which I'm going to talk about in the next slide, we would, uh, would like to have like a, a probabilistic uh, prediction of the velocity. So that if there is no bathymetry measurement, still our solver can be used to have some estimation of the flow velocity. Uh, so these are the general steps, the, uh, the whole setup of the problem that we're trying to solve. Um, first, we start from uh, this algorithm, PCGA, standard for principal component geostatistical approach. And the paper on the bottom probably, would, if, if you're interested, you can look at that paper to get my, uh, some idea of how the algorithm works. But the way it works is that briefly starting from some velocity measurement, it estimates a uh, bathymetry profile. Um, so we only need to do the bathymetry measurement, which was one issue that I mentioned in the previous slide. And then once we have some estimation of the bathymetry using this PCG approach, we generate um, bathymetry distribution, so that we try to open whatever bathymetry that the PCG gave us. And I'm going to uh, talk about it later why we do this stage. And then after that, while we have information of the bathymetry profiles, we generate boundary conditions here, the flux uh, and the uh, free surface elevation of the river, and then use some sort of numerical solver. Here we use ADH. Again, I'm going to discuss what this forward solver is to predict, the, uh, to, to uh, calculate the flow velocities. And then eventually we're going to use all this information as our data to our um, deep neural network or ROM here stands for reduce order model, which is pretty much the main, the, the core of this whole process, which is the fast forward solver. Uh, and a little bit uh, detail of these stages, one by one, what's going on in each of these stages. The first stage, the PCGA part of it, it works is that, um, this is for instance, the, the profile that I'm showing is the uh, Savannah River near Georgia, uh, United States. Um, in, it is in Georgia. And this is pretty much you know, the main uh, river that we're trying to validate our algorithm on. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, of course, you can extend it to other rivers as well. Um, so the way it works is that PCG works is starting from velocity measurement. Um, we can use drifters and then take the picture of uh, how the, uh, the video of the, how the drifters move to get information of the velocity profile. And then from that, using this PCG approach, we have an estimation of the bathymetry, which is in the form of some distribution. Here, for instance, uh, the posterior distribution here stands for the bathymetry distribution pretty much. So we can probably uh, see that the posterior realizations on the right are quite close to Savannah River, the actual profile. But of course, they're samples from distribution, so they're not exactly the same. They are the mean of those profiles are going to be quite close to actual profile. Anyway, this stage should give us uh, some information, some of the estimation or distribution of the bathymetry. 
without any direct measurement. And the ne next stage, what we do is that uh, we generate bathymetry distribution. Uh, and the reason for that is that we want to sort of broaden the range of bathymetries for which our uh, fast solver is valid. For instance, when the bathymetry changes over time due to sediment or like uh, erosion or uh, for any reason. So we want our fast forward solver to be valid for a broader range of bathymetries, not just what the PCJ algorithm gives us. Uh, very briefly, what this stage does is starting from one of the samples from posterior distribution. This is something that we had in the previous slide. We add a, a Gaussian kernel to it to sort of broaden this distribution to include more varieties of uh, bathymetries. And then we also add the second stage sort of a scaling factor. What, and what it does is that, as you can see, that near the, uh, the shorelines, like the two sort of right and left ends of the river, it, it tries to shrink the standard deviation or the uncertainty. And this is pretty much trying to um, be as close as possible to what happens in reality for rivers because near the shores, I mean, uh, usually the river uh, have less variation compared to middle of the river. So trying to be closer to actual river profiles. Anyway, going through this process, starting from that posterior realization, we get a profile like the one at the bottom. And as you see, these sort of the features are more emphasized or accented after going through this, this process. So we have like more varieties of bathymetries eventually as a data. Uh, this, should, uh, this should take care of the second stage of this uh, multi-stage process. And uh, we have now all uh, the bathymetry information that we need as part of our data to provide to our forward solver. And now uh, we try to get information, we, we try to generate more velocity profiles. Uh, so this, the, the way this, uh, this process works is that, uh, as you can see, this forward model, the ADH, um, it requires both the bathymetries and also the boundary conditions. So what we did is that we actually used the USGS website uh, uh, to get the actual bathymetry, um, uh, sorry, to actual boundary conditions over three year period for Savannah River, the, the river that we are going to study here. And these are how the boundary conditions look like. And this is also the joint distribution for the two boundary conditions that we have here, which as I said, are uh, flux, the, the discharge and also the free service elevation. And as you can see, the distribution is quite close to a, a curve, sort of, um, which means that they are quite strongly correlated to each other. And then we fit some curve to it, and uh, eventually the boundary conditions that we're going to generate, which is going to be to fit to our forward solvers, are uh, from this distribution. So some uniform from uniform distribution of the discharge, and then we find what its equivalent um, free surface value is. Anyway, after we have this information, we can use our forward numerical solver to get information of the velocities. Just a little detail about this forward solver ADH is the two dimensional shallow water module of the US Army Corps of Engineers. The ADH stands for adaptive hydraulics. It's, uh, it provides stable as finite element approximation of both depths and flow velocities. The results that we have here is only for flow velocities, but it can easily be extended to calculation of the depth, depths and prediction of the depth as well. And also it assumes uh, it has the access to the information of the bathymetry and boundary condition. These are the input to the algorithm. And as you can see in that block in the middle, we, we are providing this information to our forward solver, to our numerical solver. Uh, in any case, these stages should provide um, all the data that you require to use um, for training of our fast forward solvers, the deep neural network, which is sort of, like I said, uh, the, um, the, main, the main part of our my presentation and our work here, the fast forward solver. We use three different fast forward solvers here, all of course based on deep, uh, deep neural network, as I, as, as I said before. Uh, this is the first one, which we call PCADNN, Principal Component Analysis Deep Neural Network. Uh, and it, it takes bathymetry and boundary condition as input and velocity as output. But also you can, you can see that there is the PCA stage, which is a, a dimension reduction technique. And the reason that we use that uh, very briefly, briefly is because, for instance, for the case of Savannah River, which is going to be similar more or less uh, for other rivers as well, um, the, the, river pro, uh, the sort of uh, river profiles velocity or any, anyway, the number of uh, grid points that we have are quite large. So here, for instance, we have 41,501, around 20,000 inputs, uh, which is quite high dimensional. So that's why we have this PCA, this dimension reduction technique to reduce the dimension from 20,000 for instance, for the case of Savannah River that we had here, um, 250, from 20,000 to 50. And this, dim this dimension reduction part is, is quite important because you know, it reduced the size of the problem. And as a result, we would require less data and uh, to avoid overfitting. And of course, the size of the network also would be smaller. So it's going to be trained much faster. 
Um, in any case, this is the PC DNN approach, and we use two other DNN based uh, solver as well. SES stands for supervised encoder. It has an auto encoder like a structure, but instead, uh, it's, it's, it's being used for supervised uh, learning because here the input and output are different. And another algorithm also we tried here, SVE, which stands for a supervised variational encoder. And similar to SE, this is a, a sort of supervised version of a variational uh, encoder, auto encoder. And it goes from bathymetry to velocity, similar to the other two. Anyway, we uh, we validate sort of our fast forward solver. We, we use these three solvers and we try to compare their performance with each other. Uh, so here's the result. We used 4,000, uh, the, the training set size was 4,000 and then 500 and 500 for validation and test data set. And th when I say five, uh, 500 or 4,000, this is the number of previous profiles. So we generated this many number of previous profiles to hold previous profile for. Um, Savannah so River and calculate this velocity and as like in a random boundary condition, whatever I uh, I discussed I talked about before. Anyway, uh, this means that we had five thousand uh, river profiles in general and its associated velocities. These are the results uh, for train validation and tested for the three uh, solvers that I had in the previous slide, but also another one that here I refer to a PCDNN with linear map, which is pretty much similar to PCDNN. But the activation function in the DNN part are linear. So pretty much PCDNN with linear map is a linear map from bathymetry to velocity. Everything is linear here. And it's performed pretty much qu quite similar to PCDNN, but you can see that SE and SV, they perform much better. Mm, it's because, uh, and this is also the, the, the numbers are referred to root mean square error. So the smaller the number, the, the better the performance is. And uh, the, the better performance of SE and SV is most likely because you know they're equipped with uh, nonlinear dimension reduction techniques. So it's setting the latent space dimension to be equal for, for all these methods, which was 50 here. They expect to uh, capture the dynamics of the system with that same, same number of latent space dimension, much better than uh, linear dimension reduction technique. And these are some results from the test set. We have the reference profile on top left, and the other three are the errors for PCD and SE and SVE. And um, you can see some consistent with the result in the, in the table, the SE and SVE, they have a smaller error compared to PCD and approach. Again, uh, most likely because of the nonlinear dimension direction technique. And also this, uh, I think this should be my last slide before the conclusion, uh, which is comparison of the performance of different methods, but actually here I, I, I will just show the SE result. But in any case, this is for the case that there is no bathymetry measurement. This was something that I mentioned in my First slide as one of the motivation of for using this algorithm that in many cases we don't have uh, any information of bathymetry measurement. So we would like to have our bathymetry information from the PCG, from the inverse solver uh, method that we had. So we would like to see how the algorithm perform if we don't have any bathymetry measurement. And uh, as I said in my uh, first slide before, that uh, instead of bathymetry as input, we have bathymetry sample from the posterior distribution. And the velocity also instead is going to be velocity distribution, not deterministic velocities. Uh, this is an example. Again, I'm just showing it for the SE case, but the performance and the comparison of these different methods is similar to the previous slide, that SE and SP perform similar and PCA uh, DNN perform uh, worse than these two. Uh, this is worth one of the um, one of the examples in the test set, and we show the true mean and true standard deviation. So we generate, let's say, 100 bathymetry profiles. And if you're going to get uh, 100 uh, uh, velocity profiles, and we have these old samples, I think they calculate true and a true mean and a standard deviation. And these are the profiles that we get uh, using the actual numerical solver ADH. And these new plots are uh, what we get using our forward solver. And both mean and the standard deviation are quite close to the actual um, sort of true mean and a standard deviation, which shows that even if you don't have any bathymetry measurement, this forward solver, fast forward solver, is very good at predicting the mean and the standard deviation, or in a more general sense, the distribution of the velocities. Uh, uh, to conclude the work, all the trainings can be done on personal CPU machines. I mean, I tried doing all this uh, training um, on my own computer, my laptop, and it works. It takes probably a few hours. It's still doable. Uh, so. We can, we can do the whole thing without GPU. And of course, the prediction stage uh, is much, much faster. So it's more than three orders of order of magnitude faster than the common numerical solver like ADH. Uh, we don't need direct bathymetry measurement when designing the solver, like because all the stages have been done by uh, starting from the PCGA and then generating the synthetic data. So there is no bathymetry measurement required when designing the solver. 
And the same software can be used to predict velocity in presence and absence of bathymetry measurement. So the result that I showed in the previous slide, which was for the case without any bathymetry measurement, I used the same software that I trained for the case with uh, the bathymetry. So it's the same software, nothing new. And very briefly, our future work, we would like to try a more complex and general augmentation of distribution. So here we added some Gaussian kernel. We would like to use something more realistic. Probably we can do something like a, a GAN and a generative methods to have closer, to have bathymetries that are closer to actual real profiles. We would also like to allow lateral uh, change of geometry, the change of lateral, you know, lateral geometry, because the geometry also changes, the lateral geometry changes as the water like uh, height changes in the river. We would also like to generalize this uh, solver to multiple classes of river. So something that we can train on one river and can be used on another river. And also this, this is actually not the future works is something that I'm working on right now, which is use the variational order for inverse problem in a Bayesian framework. So what I presented today was for forward problem, but we would like to use the same idea for inverse problem, starting from velocity, get information of the bathymetry. Uh, as I said, this was a joint work between Stanford University, University of Hawaii, and US Army uh, Engineer and Research Center. And the work was also funded by ORIS, uh, um, Oak Ridge Institute. And I, I, I'd like to thank them for supporting the work.